What is going on to all my you fans out there and welcome back to the channel. Today we are here to discuss this fourth season of you part two explaining the ending of the finale episode 10 which was titled the death of Jonathan Moore. A very fitting title for this finale as we see the rebirth of Joe Goldberg. There was so much that went down this episode. I'm so excited to break it all down for you all but before we get into it let's start the conversation in the comments below. What did you all think about this finale? What worked? What didn't work? What did you think? about this fourth season as a whole and which part did you enjoy more part one or part two and of course share your predictions and your theories of what you all hope to see in a you season five let's talk about that in the comments below and of course if you all enjoy my breakdown today consider hitting that thumbs up button as well as sharing this video and before we get into it i want to thank every single one of you all that's been watching this series of reviews in which i broke down each episode of this fourth season i really appreciate the support with that being said we got an episode to break Breakdown, full spoilers ahead. He opened with Joe burning a letter left behind by Mary Ann requesting him to leaving her where she can be found so that her daughter won't have to suffer thinking her mother is still out there alive, which is very important for a little bit later on. We see Joe places her body on this bench. Fast forwarding to the next day, in class we see the students discover that Reese's body was found in the woods and Joe is very surprised. Cut to seeing Nadia apologizing to Edward about her recent behavior as she shows him an article about Love Quinn's death involving Joe. Now Nadia takes Edward to Joe's secret location to prove her point as the cage is now gone. Edward claims to believe her as they plan to take down Joe together. Back home with Joe, he begins to write his letter explaining his crimes as he plans to end it all. We see Reese tells him that he's wasted his time because Tom Lockwood is coming for him, but this conversation is cut short because Kate messages Joe that she needs him because this is an emergency. Kate tells him she planned on skipping town but proceeds to go ahead and telling him about a time when she was younger and when she discovered that her father was just so obsessed and so controlling about everything in her life that he actually hired someone to follow her everywhere she went in a form of some type of protection. We see that she tells Joe about what happened when she spoke to her father last and questions if Joe was even hired by him. Now we see at this point as I stated in my previous breakdown it was just a matter of time after hearing Kate tell him how her father owns her, we see Joe getting ready to do what he does best and that's setting his sight on killing Tom Lockwood. But first, Joe must confront his inner self as he's having a conversation with Reese and we see them having this conversation about potentially coming to an agreement about how this relationship will be working moving forward as he suggests that they should integrate as we see the plan is set in motion to kill Tom Lockwood. We get a quick scene first as we see Edward gives Nadia a USB with everything about the Eat the Rich Killer and Reese as this will help build the case against Joe, which will end up going against Edward a little bit later on. We see Joe manages to sneak into Tom's hangar but misses the opportunity to knock him out, so he has to make up a quick story on why he's here. As we see Joe goes on about his concerns about the discovery of Reese's body, as Tom goes to reach for his phone to relieve Joe of his worries, we see that he turns turns his back to Joe which allows Joe to take him down. Now we see Tom doesn't beg for his life but instead he tries to get into Joe's head by telling Joe that Kate doesn't really care about him and he always has been there to protect her. Now the conversation is abruptly ended as Tom's bodyguard arrives forcing Joe to actually killing him. Now we see Tom showing some concern for his life after seeing what Joe is capable of as he offers Joe a clean slate and a fresh start by making him extremely rich and saving Joe but we see Joe doesn't take the bait as Tom makes his final plea by saying he and Joe are two of the same as they're trying to protect Kate at all costs but Joe has heard enough and he kills Tom Lockwood. Now Joe takes his next steps in making it seem as though Tom's bodyguard Hugo is responsible for killing him because Joe finds out that Hugo has some financial issues and those issues are made to believe that Hugo end up robbing and eventually killing Tom. This leaves Joe with one task left which is ending himself. We see Joe's inner Reese is making a final case of keeping Joe alive as Kate gives him a call but Joe throws his phone away because he believes it's inevitable that she'll end up dead like the others. Now Joe confronts himself about how much he hates and despises this darkness inside of him. Joe thanks himself by throwing Reese over the bridge and necks himself. As we see him replaying his moments with Kate and other moments of him experiencing falling in love, we see him diving deeper and deeper into the depths of the water and in 
it appears that Joe Goldberg is gone forever. Back with Nadia and Edward, she tells him something that he must never tell and the reason why she must stop Joe. We cut back to the conversation between Nadia and Mary Ann in episode 9 in which they come up with their plan of killing Joe. And as I predicted in my last video, those pills were all a part of the plan, but the part that caught me off guard was finding out that the whole setup of her losing her daughter was also a part of the plan. So I gotta say, it was a pretty good plan by those two. We cut to Nadia waking up Marianne after Joe left her on the bench as she's safe and Joe believes she's dead. But Nadia is still worried about Joe as her and Edward head to his flat to discover the last pieces of the evidence to put him away for good. We cut to a hospital bed to find Joe is still alive. He was found by the police and believed to have accidentally fallen off the bridge as Kate arrives. Now Joe doesn't want to start off by lying and he tells her he didn't fall and he doesn't stop there, he tells her that he's killed people. As we see, Kate is aware about who killed Reese and being that her father got Joe involved to have this done, as we find out that she is now taking the responsibility of being the CEO of the company, Kate believes Joe is good and offers him a deal of keeping each other good for the remainder of their lives. He is truly a Lockwood. Joe might have found someone that actually loves him as Joe tells her everything from the start and he starts by telling her his actual name. So Kate now officially knows all his secrets, but my question is, has she told him everything as well? Back with Nadia and Edward, she searches in Joe's belongings and discovers his box of souvenirs and takes a picture of it all. She heads back to Edward and she can't seem to find him and Joe has arrived. So I guess the hospital let Joe out early because Kate's new status of power as we see Joe is cool, calm, and collected. He takes Nadia's phone and deletes the pictures she took as Joe tells her she's not in danger because his situation has changed because he now has unlimited resources and offers her a way to make this work for everybody. Now we end the episode with meeting the new owners of Adam's old club, which is Blessing and Sophia. We see that Rold has returned from his vacation, as well as Connie is back from rehab, and these people are still terrible individuals. Meanwhile, we see that Phoebe is teaching children English in Thailand, and she appears to be happy. We cut to seeing Mary Ann and her daughter are safe and happy back in Paris, as she reads an article on her phone about Joe and Kate being happy and celebrating their second chances in life and if you notice in this scene she seems to be a little bit upset and rightfully so and we'll talk about her in a little bit here as we see the freshly shaved Joe and Kate are being interviewed back home in New York City at the Lockwood Museum about the tragic past of Love Quinn and seeing that Joe had faked his own death but with Tom's previous publicist Cynthia they managed to dodge the important questions that many have as we see exactly how Joe Joe managed to keep Nadia quiet. We cut back to that scene where we see Joe actually killed Edward and we see that Nadia was in shock and she takes the knife that Joe used to kill Edward and you'll notice that it appears that Joe has officially accepted his dark side as he puts everything in motion to make it seem as though Edward was the one responsible for Reese's death because of that USB drive that he showed earlier in the episode and says that Nadia killed him. As Joe tells her how smart she is and he's looking forward to seeing how she's going to find her way out of the situation. We see Joe walks away and he explains that Nadia remains silent in prison. As we wrap up our final scene, we see our last shot of Joe back in New York looking back at himself and we see Reese in the mirror smiling back at him. The plan for this new power couple is to change the world and if killing is needed, it's much easier this time around because Joe is now honest with himself about everything that he does. So we see that Joe would rather die than take responsibility of his actions and he's been officially reborn and has all the tools at his disposal and escapes again as he's now accepted who he really is which to me means that all these innocent people in the future will die so the question is what next i would imagine if there is to be a season five which as i'm recording this there has been no official announcement but i would bet my money that we would see all those he left behind and alive and has damaged their lives will be seeking revenge on Joe and you might be asking well who are those people well starting off with the Quinn family who were led to believe that the hitman they hired in the season killed Joe so I bet 
they will be seeking some type of vengeance and also seeking their justice for their daughter as well as 40 and you can't forget about ellie whose sister delilah was killed by love back in season two and if you all do not know jenna ortega was supposed to be in this new season of you but due to scheduling issues with shooting wednesday she wasn't able to so i would bet that she will be a part of a season five and i also believe even though she's safe with her daughter in paris marianne would want revenge once she finds out that the person that saved her is in prison which is nadia and i wouldn't be surprised if nadia is a part of this plan but also she might recruit dawn who by all means was a stalker in her own right but we know that joel framed her for murder so she's gonna probably have some vengeance as well also you can't forget that edward's mom runs the newspaper so she may be seeking vengeance because she knows her son isn't capable of murder and he has no reason had killed reese and also i gotta say i wouldn't be surprised if rolled won't be jealous of this new love between kate and joe and may want to help as well but i do think to me it would be more fitting if all the women that joe has affected would be the one taking charge so overall, I thought this season did a really good job of showing us characters that would rather die or rather sell someone out than take any responsibility for their actions. Also, we saw on full display all the privileges that money can buy people of power. This show manages to continue to show us Joe taking down what he considers to be terrible people, which they are, whether you think about Malcolm or Simon or Gemma and even Tom Lockwood of that matter. He takes these people down and there's some sense of poetic justice in doing so, but the show doesn't forget to show us that Joe is still the worst of them all and he's now found Kate who in some ways is probably more evil and bad than he is because she allows this stuff to happen. Now, Kate has known of all the cover-ups and the murders that her father committed, and she did nothing, and she was responsible for those kids getting cancer, and she took no responsibility. So, this is a very good theme that I think the show is really displaying, is again, these privileges and how people don't take any responsibility for any of their actions. Now, while I did enjoy part one, I thought part two was the better half. Now, I thought the story was richer, the suspense was better, and the performances, man, Penn Badgley's performance was great. He was great great in part one but he was phenomenal in the second half and shout out to him for directing his first episode of this series and speaking of phenomenal Tati Gabriel was absolutely great I love that they brought her story back into the mix and I do think she will be a part in season five as I had mentioned earlier but man think about episode eight and how incredible she was in that moment and in those scenes and I can't leave out shouting out Ed Spellers who played Reese in this season he was stellar as well so for those that are watching those are my thoughts on the entirety of season four on this finale and i want to thank you all for watching this video and for those who watch all five breakdowns for part two put in the comments right now five for five thank you so much for the support and for those that watch all 10 of my breakdowns for every single episode of this fourth season put in the comments right now 10 for 10 and you my friends are the best and are the real mvps i really appreciate y'all so leave your thoughts in the comments comments on part two on this finale of season four which part did you enjoy more and of course share your predictions and your theories about what you all hope to see in a part five or i should say season five i'll be making some short form content for my rankings of the season of you and i'll have some other videos that you all can keep an eye out for for this show stay tuned for that before you all leave just a friendly reminder if you enjoyed today's content make sure you all are hitting that thumbs up sharing this video leaving your thoughts in the comments subscribe Subscribe by clicking right here, check out my latest video, and check out my playlist for all my you breakdowns. You all are great, stay safe, and I'll see you all on the next breakdown.